friend remains the friend, and the mistake remains the mistake. In other words, you can separate your friendship and the mistakes, and go forward, and get value out of the friendship. And so I'll be the first to admit that I've made mistakes. I'll be the first to admit that we may have different differences on some of the issues. But I hope that we can recognize what we have in common, what we're trying to achieve in the future, the goals that we have for our state and for our country to bring back freedom, to bring back choice as to what our future is going to be, to bring back fiscal responsibility and to relieve the burden of the cost of government from our children and from our grandchildren. I hope we can agree on that. Amen. And I will say at this point, if you don't like what's coming out of Hartford today, if you don't like what's coming out of Washington, D.C. today, then you've got to change what's going in. And there are people in this room who are ready to go in. <laughs> next section, we're going to be uh, asking questions. I'm going to have Joe Markley come up and uh, start off. Thank you, Rusty. Um, we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate you coming here, Rob. It's my pleasure. It's my and pleasure. Uh, you know you're going to get now uh, <laughs> some tough questions that uh, express some concerns that I think some of the people in the Tea Party movement have had about, uh, about Congressman Simmons' uh, positions. So I'm going to call on a series of people that have been involved for a, a while. Let me start out with Bob McGuffey um, from Right Principles. All right. All right. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, you're talking about mistakes, Rob. Um, you would, maybe we'll get an opportunity to clarify a few of them. The first question is on taxes. According to the National Taxpayers Union, you sponsored or co-sponsored 370 bills that increased spending and only 13 that reduced spending in your six years in the House. First of all, you have an opportunity to correct out if it's uh, materially off. Your recent campaign rhetoric indicates you'd prefer to reverse that trend in the Senate. So what action, action, or commitment are you willing to offer to bind yourself to recent pledges of fiscal responsibility? I, uh, I have you know, different records from different organizations. Uh, the organization that uh, I have been affiliated with some time is Americans for Tax Reform. Uh, I think that's uh, Grover Norquist's uh, group. And they periodically put out a tax pledge and request that elected officials or people who are running for public office will sign the pledge. I have signed that pledge. Now, that being said, I believe that the numbers that you just uh, quoted to me uh, probably uh, are not accurate in, in, a, in a whole sense, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, there are situations when, and, and, and part of the reason I believe that is because the number is so high. The number is so high. There are situations that you encounter uh, in a legislature uh, where there are procedural motions, motions to instruct, motions to recommit, that are uh, an aspect of the political process, but are not central or core to what we're trying to accomplish. And what I would like to do, and what I will commit to you, uh, is that I would I would like to get my hands on that number, and I will have uh, either myself or one of my supporters go through that and give you an exact accounting for those numbers. Yeah, but what, what are you willing to say going forward? No on taxes. No taxes, point one. Point two, how about a tax holiday for small business? Yeah. Maybe six months for small business. <laughs> would, you, would you introduce anything to repeal existing taxes? Absolutely. Would you, uh, how, you about, will. how about extending the 2001-2003 tax cuts, which were the largest tax cuts in history I supported those tax cuts. Not only were they tax cuts on, on uh, people who wanted to be married, they were tax cuts on businesses. They allowed expensing uh, for acquisition of new equipment, and there were tax cuts across the board. I, I voted for those, and I've spoken publicly to extend those. We cannot allow those to expire. If they expire, we will encounter the largest tax increase 
that we've had, I think, probably since the Clinton administration. Um, Tanya, next we have a question from uh, Tanya Bashan, who's the uh, head of the Connecticut Tea Party. Patriots. Patriots. <laughs> Whatever we're the head of, we don't know. on my email list so he knew that we were he was coming here today. I look I'm here to listen and I'm here to respond. Uh, as I said, w there may be disagreement, but but there's no point in being uh, disagreeable because this is how we learn and this is how the process works. Uh, my question is going to be on tort reform uh, and in the interest of full disclosure, I am in fact a practicing plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. Um, one of the rare personal injury lawyers who's, a, who's also a conservative, there aren't very many of us around here. Um, medical malpractice cases, uh, only about 27% of them actually end up in recovery for a plaintiff. And the vast majority, well over 90% of the medical malpractice cases are filed in state court. Given that, you have on your website that we need tort reform. Right and uh, that you want to stop frivolous lawsuits. Right. What is your definition of a frivolous lawsuit? And what is the role of the federal government given that well over 90% of the cases are filed in state court? The, um, the issue of tort reform, I think, is important because of the issue of the cost of uh, health care. And that's probably uh, one of the principal reasons why I have mentioned it on my webpage. Uh, the administration and the Congress have tried to force a essentially a government takeover of health care with a public option on the American people, which in my opinion most of the American people don't want. Some may want it, most don't want it. And this has resulted in some very um, exciting town hall meetings uh, and a very exciting um, uh, picketing outside congressional offices. Now, I will be the first to say that I think we can look at some ways to improve health care when it comes to the cost of health care. Uh, one of those ways to improve costs is through association health plans where small businesses are allowed to associate together and compete for premiums and that's a well-known uh, mechanism that I've supported in my six years in Congress. Another mechanism is, is uh, allowing citizens to buy their health care across state lines or out of state. Uh, as I do for my, um, my uh, insurance for my car and my insurance for my house, flood insurance and fire insurance. I buy from a Texas company. Uh, caters to military. I get a good price. Why can't we buy our health care? But, but the thing I hear most from my doctor and from other doctors is that we are practicing defensive medicine. We're practicing defensive medicine where we will perhaps do more procedures and expensive procedures than are necessary, but we want to, uh, to eliminate uh, any suggestion that we're not providing what the patient needs because we want to avoid what I call frivolous lawsuits. Uh, lawsuits that may not have merit, but may result in payments uh, being made. Um, here in Connecticut, uh, we have a problem as a state when it comes to torts. And, and let me be clear about that. A, a tort is an injury. I think that's the proper uh, definition. It comes from the French. It's an injury. And I think our, our tort system should be uh, fast, efficient, and fair. In other words, if somebody is injured, I think they should be made whole uh, quickly and efficiently. Um, and the injured party is made whole by the injuring party. And that, that connection has to be well understood. Well. Um, how are we doing in Connecticut when it comes to our tort liability? You know, if, if a state has a bad reputation based on its tort liability, it's hard to attract business, it's hard to keep business, and if you can't tra attract and keep business, you can't create jobs. Now, does anyone want to guess where we are in the state of Connecticut? How many are going to say we're in the top half of the nation when it comes to the to fast and efficient tort process in the state of Connecticut. Fast and efficient, top no. half of the nation, right? No. 